Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're doing a little bit of a guitar setup trick type video. We're going to talk about how to deal with high end action here, right at the, the high end frets, how to lower that down, especially if you don't have any more room on the bridge. Let's get after it. So this is a guitar that I built from a guitar kit from Solo quite a while ago, painted it. Really cool, I love this guitar. I mean, you might not all agree with me about it being cool, but I like this one. It's got kind of this custom panel airbrush front, the actual rivets in it, um, which one guy was really not a fan of. But anyway, the actual rivets in it to make it look like panels from an airplane that's kind of tearing apart. It's got the like burn streak back, kind of aged hardware type thing going on. Um, this is all poly and then the neck is a satin lacquer so I've got that satin lacquer feel on the neck and actually a little bit of checking on the headstock for kind of that burnt vintage everything that I'm going for there. Uh, also some interesting scalloping right here tapered. Yeah I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool but as it turns out I need to sell a few or at least a couple guitars um, due to kind of a change in circumstances. Well it Head of mine needed emergency surgery. So I'm going to sell a couple guitars to help pay for that because it's expensive. And this is going to be one of them. I think I may already have a buyer for this. I'm not 100% sure. But um, the action up here is a little high. And I figured this would be a great opportunity for, you, for me to show you guys what I'm going to do about that. Um, built this guitar quite a while ago. Had some tricks for this, but didn't know really the best way to deal with it. And now I do. While I'm at it, I'm also going to give these frets a bit more of a polish. So, you know, my technique for doing that has changed a little bit over time. So I'm going to polish that up. They don't look quite as good as I'd like them to, but that's going to be an easy fix. I'm going to do that real quick uh, because there's no point in me showing you guys how to do that. I've done it for you a whole bunch of times. And then I'm going to take the neck off and you guys can see it's really a simple trick for how to deal with the action here. Let's get to it. All right, so I've done the refresh on this. My, my frets look awesome now. Simple as that. Sometimes I think my crowning and, and polishing technique is so good it's not even fair. But anyway, um, so those are all level now, good to go. And now I'm just gonna oil up the fingerboard, get this ready, ready to go. We'll get the action dialed in after and then that'll be that. So this is extremely smooth now. Part of my process is smoothing out the board, rounding off the edges, making sure everything is perfect, comfortable, all of that. So if this were a wood that wasn't quite this smooth, I would probably use something like Odie's oil. But for a wood like this, what I like to use is Mohawk's fingerboard oil. So thank you Mohawk for sending this to me. This stuff is my preferred fingerboard oil for, like I said, really smooth fingerboards. Comes with this nice little applicator pad too that I'm that I've been using for a few years now and never had any issues with. I actually had the same oil from Bellin before and now I'm using the Mohawk version. So we'll get this finished off real quick and then it'll be time to move on to the trick that is the point of this video but I figure while you guys are watching me prep this thing to go you might as well see the whole process pretty much except for what I've done many times which is the fret work. Got to get right into these um, scalloping areas here. Those are sanded out really smooth too. Did all of that as part of this process to get this thing ready to go. All right, so don't have to worry about that fretboard being dry now. Takes off any excess polish at the same time from the fret polishing. Now I'll just use the other side of this to give it a wipe down. Let the rest of that soak in, and that's that. Happy with that. All right, let's move on. So the adjustment that we're making to improve action is actually right here. We're gonna raise the heel up slightly so that it's perfect here. And we're gonna do that by adding a shim. We're gonna add a touch, just a touch of neck angle. Not anything like you'd see on a Gibson. This is not gonna feel like a raised bridge guitar. It's not gonna feel like an angled neck. It's just a very, very little bit. So as I do that, one other thing on this, 
that I've noticed is when I did this build, I made it so that the screws actually fit this part of the guitar. Now that may make sense to you, or you may know exactly where I'm going with this. The idea for the neck pocket is to have the neck in there tight. It doesn't have to be snug around the outsides really on a bolt-on, it just needs to be stuck well. It needs to suck in there really well. And the best way to do that is to have the screws actually move freely through the heel here of the guitar and only pull on the neck so that they can pull down and you don't have to worry about any thread gapping there. So I'm actually going to drill that piece out a little bit so that those screws flow freely through there. Now we don't want a bunch of extra room, just enough for the screws to move in there freely. I'm going to pull this off of here and ever so carefully widen these out. All right, there we go. So these move freely through there now. They don't bind on anything. You don't have to twist them to get them through. We're good to go. So now all that's left is to add our shim stock. I've got some thin shim stock here. This is just from Stumac, I think. Um, I'm gonna shim half of this neck uh, pocket. That's the plan. So I'll make a tiny little mark on there right in the middle with my hobby knife. Now I'll just take this and cut it in half using the same knife. This stuff is very thin. And I'm just going to shim the back half of it. You can glue that in if you want. It's completely unnecessary though. It's very, very thin and, and it's just going to get clamped down by the screws. I've seen people use some weird stuff for this. If your neck is way out, you might need a couple of these. Some people use other things like a piece of sticky sandpaper, which works just fine. Or a couple of coins, for example, which is something I would be less comfortable with. But anyway, it's not crazy scientific. The idea is simply you need something in there that's going to compress, give you a firm bond or a firm uh, joint when the screws are through it, and obviously not, not impede the screws, and add a tiny bit of neck angle. So let's see if one's going to do it or if we need to have two in there. I think one's just going to be fine, though, because we don't have a whole lot of adjustment required. Let's check it out. All right, on visual inspection, it looks like one is adequate, so I'm going to put my shim stock away and get this neck screwed back in and see if I'm right. Just break through that shim stock when I push this in place. There we go. We'll use our usual cross pattern. There we go. All right, guys, well, there you have it. We did our tune-up work on this. We have refreshed the fretwork. Um, we've re-oiled the neck, which looks great. We've reamed out or drilled out the holes a little bit more in the heel to make sure that our neck joint is even better than it was before. I never had any problems with the sustain on this guitar. It was good and everything, but 
that's been sorted now. So really happy with that. We've got our shim, which was the, I guess the main purpose of this video was to show you that trick because it makes a huge difference. Action is perfect now. Perfect, exactly how I like it. Nice and straight, nice and low, way better. Uh, and in fact, in order to get it that way, before I had these basically bottomed out, the saddles, you may have noticed, you may not have noticed. Anyway, I had them pretty much bottomed out to keep the action nice and low. Now I don't have to do that. Now I've got them raised up nicely so that I've got lots of clearance over my pickup. I'm able to better get the radius of the fretboard and the frets down here as well on the saddles. All looks good now. So maybe a few minor touch-ups to go as I tune it, but other than that, not getting any buzz or anything. I'm happy with it. So now I'm gonna contact the guy that I think uh, had previously expressed interest in purchasing this and see if he still wants it. If not, I will probably be putting it up for auction, but one way or another, I expect I'm going to put a different guitar up for auction probably, unless somebody makes me a, a good offer on it before that. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, you'll see me announce that one coming up shortly. And just one final kind of thing here. I know I said what the money was for on this, but I wanted to say, um, hopefully I've shown that I'm a pretty honest guy here. Uh, those of you who support me on Patreon, as usual, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It helps me get the stuff that I need to be able to make these videos. And I promised when I set up Patreon and told you guys about it, that that would be what I would use it for, that I would use that money specifically for picking things up to make these videos. That hasn't changed. So don't worry. Uh, I don't know, I don't think anybody would have been worried, but don't worry, that's still exclusively what that's gonna go to. None of that will go toward my personal stuff, <laughs> except to the extent that it's useful for these videos. As always guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. It does help me out. And uh, remember to subscribe so you can see, well, the next guitar that I'm working on go up for sale. And I don't know if you can see it, but this Bad Cat guitars. Uh, assembly and the work that I'm going to do on that and all I got lots of stuff going on as usual in fact if I were to list that I'd probably have to make another video about that so thanks again hope you liked it have a good one I'll see you next time